So um, I, I consider money management really to be the most important part of trading and investing because if you don't sort of watch the bottom line and make sure that you're not allowing uh, too much money to be placed in one particular idea and you're not watching that money if the market starts going against you, then you can blow up your whole account fairly quickly. I've used this analogy in my classes uh, many times, but it's similar to the idea um, when you're investing in a new company, let's say that somebody came up with an idea of some new technology that's never been, uh, never existed before, and the, you think there'll be a high demand for it and you create a business plan and projections and you decide what the audience might be and how much you might sell the product for, you know, this whole elaborate business plan with potential profits and um, expectations. That's the way a business can start, especially in a new industry. Uh, and you might decide to invest based on those projections, which would be in the investment world predictions. But once you start the business and everything is set up and it's running and you have customers, you no longer need to look at your projections. You no longer need to look at all the things that got you invested in the first place because now you have real world evidence of whether it's working or not, whether it's making money, making a profit or not. Um, but most people, when they get into the investment world, once they get the investment, once they buy something, I can hear myself echoing, by the way, a little bit. If you can turn your volume down a little bit on your end. Um, uh, when, sure. When the um, investment is made, most people will continue to use their forecast as the you know, direction of their trade instead of looking at it, is it performing or is it not? Just like you would look at a company that's either making money or it's not. You're not going to hold a company that keeps losing money perpetually, but most people will tend to hang on to investments that aren't making money because they keep hoping it's going to turn around or they're looking at their forecast and saying, well, my forecast says it's supposed to go up, so I'm just going to keep waiting until it does. And in the meantime, it keeps going down. So you should look at investing in the same way you would look at investing in a company. If the company's making money, you're going to keep it and keep you know, pulling out the profit and benefiting from that. If it's constantly losing money, you're not going to keep doing that forever. Eventually, you have to give up. So you have to have a give up point for stock market investment, um, could be equities, index, options, whatever the situation is. You have to have a give up point so that you don't let your investment go to zero because any poorly run company can you know, run you into the ground the same way a bad investment can if you never get out. So that's why money management is very important. And there's a lot of other aspects to that that we can talk about over the next uh, 10, 15, 20 minutes. So is that something okay. in particular you want to ask or discuss? Uh, well, I just, you know, I, I struggle with uh, stop losses a lot because, you know, okay. too close, you get, you get stopped out unnecessarily. Uh, too far away, you lose too much money when you do get stopped out. Okay, so that's, that's a really always... That's really important because I don't actually use physical stop losses in the market. I think that's that's not something anybody does that has large you know amounts of money because the markets will dive for those stops if they exist. So when you're talking about managing money, it shouldn't be based on particular stop levels. Once you're in, it should be based on how much you're making or losing. So for example, if you're buying outright stock positions, you buy 100 shares, say you spend uh, $100, the market goes, assuming the share is $1 share, of course, the market goes down 10% um, or more. That's when I start getting concerned about the position and I may start lightening up. But by the time it reaches 15%, it's generally time to give up. That means you either had a bad idea, you didn't enter well, um, something has gone wrong with the company, but it's potentially the beginning of a much worse situation. And if you buy the stock at 100 and you hang on to it uh, all the way, or you buy it at $1, you buy 100 shares for $1, and you hang all the way until it goes to zero, then you're going to lose all your money. So you have to have a point where you give up. So I generally at the end of the day, the markets are really active, maybe in the middle of the day. I'll look at how things are going. And if a uh, position starts to lose about 15% and it's a stock purchase, I just get rid of it. I don't think about it. I don't try to 
analyze it or predict it or rationalize it or talk myself out of it. I just accept that it was a bad decision and that's it. So uh, that would be the first step when you're trading physical stock. When it comes to options, anytime you're dealing with something more leveraged, you have to give it more room on the losing side because you're gonna make more money on the winning side. And your goal for this is to try to make three to one or more um, on any trade you're taking. So if you're gonna get out of 10 per, uh, 15% for a stock loss, that means you're expecting or hoping to make about 45% or more. So you're hoping to lay, you know, make 50% approximately, but 45% would be exactly three times the loss level. And if you give a position time and your entry was good, it may take a while, but eventually it might get to that 50% or 45% profit point. And then you can start taking some of your position off on that end. Um, if you want to stagger this or scale it, you could have 10% as one break point, 12.5% and 15. And then on the other side, for the profit side, you could have it at um, 30% to take some profit, 45%. And um, what was the other one? I think I'm missing, let me give my calculator out here real quick. Uh, yeah, 37 and a half. But I don't, I don't look to completely exit it, exit any position until conditions change on a long-term basis. I usually use month, monthly charts for this. So if I'm buying a stock, the monthly chart is generally the controlling time frame for me. And if the stock goes up, 30%, I might take some off the table. If it goes up 45%, I might take some off the table, but I don't completely exit. I leave the rest of it in case it goes up 100, 200, 300%. So you should never have um, a target to exit everything unless conditions start to change. Like you see deterioration in the trend on a monthly time frame. That's when you should start accepting that it's it's time to get out. But as long as the monthly trend remains strong, and you're making money, you should hang on because it could end up getting a lot better than you ever expected. Like, you know, use Bitcoin as an example. Could you imagine buying at $100 or $1,000 or even $10,000 and you get out at, you know, $15,000? You would miss out on quite a bit. So you don't want to have an upside limit where you um, give up everything. You want to have a point where only exiting if conditions change. And sometimes those conditions could change after a market's gone up 300, 400, 500%. And then you might see the monthly trend starting to turn down or you know something going on on the monthly chart, depending on what kind of indicators and trading techniques you use. You see a wave count potentially coming to an end that confirms something that is more significant than just the fact that you've made 50% on your money. It needs to be something more significant than that. Now, I currently show your microphone is locked. So if you wanted to say something, you'll have to unlock it. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I'm just because the echoing thing. I'm just turning it off while you're talking. Yeah. So, do you get that uh, point about not having physical stops and focusing more on performance? I do because I've seen the market will run stops. You know, they know they're there and they'll they'll run them and you get taken out. Yeah, and especially uh, sometimes early in the morning, late in the afternoon, they'll all of a sudden zoom up or zoom down, scare the hell out of you, and then before the day's over, everything's fine. Yeah, exactly. And I also read so, somewhere that often only a few trades will really make you the money. You know, just only the odd trade will actually run the distance and have a big return. Is that your experience? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, you know, uh, I had a trade in game stock uh, about a year or so ago and I bought it at $40 and within three days of getting in, it was up at 200 something dollars. And just, I'd never seen anything like it in my life. And Wasn't that crazy? Oh my God. It was insane. It was just yeah. insane. Uh, I actually ended up writing some calls against it when it did that. So it didn't matter if it dropped all the way back down to $40. I was still going to make a ton of money, um, but it never got down below, I think, 100 I can't remember all the details, but it was, you know, an incredible situation. I made five times my money in a matter of a few days, wrote some calls, which then made it even more profitable because uh, there was so much demand for buying the calls when that happened. Um, but those are the situations you don't want to limit. And if you have these, full exit targets, which are not based on con deteriorating conditions, but are just based on, you know, it feels good to make so much money, so I'm going to get out. That's not a good reason. You want it to be something going wrong technically, fundamentally, um, 
possibly psychologically if you're using wave theory. You want something to go wrong with the situation before you fully exit. You can exit a, a third or a half, but you should never fully exit until conditions begin to deteriorate. So you don't miss those really big moves that can make up for five or 10 small losing trades. Um, and the goal, of course, or the reason for taking these small losses at say 15% for stocks up to about 30% for options is that you not only want to have money to try again, but it's going to take just one good trade that might say double to make up for three losing trades. So that way you don't have to be right so much. One of the biggest problems with forecasting is it's difficult to be right most of the time. So if you can only be right about half the time, what you're making three times what you're making when you're winning as opposed to what you're losing, then you'll end up doing well. But you have to be very disciplined about taking those losses when they happen. Okay, because I, I wanted to see, I wanted to ask you, where does the three come from? Three times significant because of what you just said. So it's, it's sort of a, um, you know, I can't say it's an axiom in the industry, but most um, professionals will tell you, trying to make at least three times what you're, what you're risking when you're taking a trade. So to do that, when you're losing, you have to cut your loss one third uh, of the level of what you expect to make. You can always make it one fourth and four times or one fifth and five times. The more you demand on the profit side uh, and the quicker you get out, the more you're probably going to get stopped out more often. It doesn't mean it's not going to work, but your entries have to get better and better and better if you're going to go four to one, five to one, six to one. So three to one is fairly reasonable as long as you're getting into your positions on market reactions after sort of decent sell-offs so that the amount of downside is going to be reduced since it's already declined when you're getting in and the potential for it to recover a bounce are greater. So by getting in on reactions and having that three to one profit to loss ratio, it only has to go down, um, you know, it has to go down more, but if you're buying in on a pullback, it has to go down that extra amount more before you're stopped out. And as long as you're getting decent entries, not pinpoint precise, you don't have to be perfect in your forecasting, uh, but as long as you're getting in on a reaction and it's a decent entry, then it gives you some breathing room where you have that 30% loss for options or 15% loss for stocks. And if it doesn't go that far and you give it three months, three weeks, whatever the time frame is required, and it starts to recover, then eventually you might end up making a three times what you actually plan to risk. So if you're risking 10% on one side for stocks, you want to have the other side where you start to get out around 30%. Whatever the level is that you're going to pick, you want it to be at least three times that on the other end. And it can be bigger, but the bigger it is, the more accurate your entries have to be. Yeah, I did find that. Uh, you can't beat a good entry. You know, it saves a lot of stress if you can get that one. Yeah. <laughs> well, but, you know, by having a an entry that's not based on stop placement, but is based on actual loss and generally loss more toward the end of the day, toward the close, not during the day, it will help to get rid of a lot of the wild gyrations that happen very temporarily, but don't last. And then, you know, the closes are more permanent and more substantial because all the buying and selling is sort of over with for the day. And you know who's winning that particular day, the bulls or the bears. Uh, same thing applies to weekly closes and monthly closes that they're more significant than just the intra-month, intra-week, intra-day kind of behavior. So if you focus more on the price toward the close and you take action based on that, then you're gonna avoid all the whipsawing that takes place. You're gonna avoid having to predict and project where support really is. Your focus strictly is on, is this the right time to get in or not? You get in and then each day around the close, you just assess how bad is it? How bad is my position doing? Do I need to get out? Is it losing enough to justify getting out? If not, then you keep hanging on. This will force you to stay in on your your winning positions a lot longer than your losing positions, but that fits right in with the sort of famous saying, cut your losses quickly and let your profits run. The only way you can do that is to actually have a percentage-based liquidation strategy based on how much you're losing and how much you're making. Okay, and so you, I should check once a day or more often if it's more volatile? 
Yeah, I, I recommend that if the market's in a strong trend, there's actually multiple ways you can approach this, but um, if the market's in a strong trend and it's, it's fairly active, then you might want to check, you know, midday toward the end of the day. If it's pretty dead, then around the close is perfectly fine once a day. Um, there's also another factor you could take into account. You could look at your entire portfolio, and if your entire, entire portfolio has a nice bottom line profit, like say you're up 10% in open trade equity, then you can be a lot more flexible on how often you look at your uh, account. But if your total return is negative, you're going to be wanting to watch your account multiple times a day because you, you, your goal is to make sure that you don't lose money. So if you have a nice buffer, you don't have to pay so much attention. If you don't have that buffer, you're going to want to start cutting your losses even faster to make sure it doesn't get really negative. Okay, yeah, because it's always nice to play with the house's money, isn't it? Right, you know, right. And, yeah. and if you're trading options, especially if you're trading spreads, time is your friend. Every day that passes, you're pulling in a little extra money from the premium decay. So as long as your overall position, your portfolio is in profit, especially a decent amount of profit, then you don't have to worry so much because you can let that premium keep working for you. But the minute that your net position starts to go negative, that could be you know, the beginning of a big market pullback, uh, downturn, change of circumstances, bad news coming out you're not aware of. So you want to start getting out much quicker at that point and paying attention to it you know, throughout the day. Okay, because I've always struggled with the, the, you know, the position goes against you and you think, well, do I hang on or you know, do I get out and then see it go my way anyway? You know, it's, it's always, yeah, well, it's hard well, to do, isn't it? Yeah, well, the performance issue sort of takes care of that. It's not based on what you believe the future holds or where the market's going to go. It's a very simple bottom line, um, completely objective observation. Is the position making money or is it losing money? And if it's losing, is it losing enough to reach that break point where I'm going to get out, which I recommend, again, for stocks around 15%, probably no, no closer than 10%. And the other question is, is it making money? And I would start to look for 30% on the long side if you're using 10% as your exit and 45% if you're using 15%. But again, don't you want to fully exit if you're losing, but you don't want to fully exit if you're winning. You want to always keep about a third of it open just in case it just keeps going up. And that one third could end up making tons of money uh, if the market really, if the investment really takes off. Like, you know, Microsoft has been going up nonstop for years and years and years. So you would never have wanted to completely exit that situation. Same thing for Apple. Okay. Yeah, no, okay. And uh, I mean, are there other alternatives or is this just the best way to control uh, control your losses? I don't know of any good alternative. You know, I, I was in the prediction camp for 30 years trading futures and having stops all the time and always worrying about where to move my stops. And it was a constant headache, a constant stress. And uh, trading futures, of course, is 24 hours a day during the week, which is not very much fun. So I gave up on that for that reason. But um, always having to worry about stops means you're constantly predicting what the future holds. And you don't, you don't know for sure. You can only guess. And I would say, if you're lucky, your guess is going to be 50% right. Uh, probably even worse than that most of the time. So you want to base it strictly on things you can know 100% for sure, which is, is it doing well or is it not doing well? And has it reached the point where I need to take action? That becomes a super objective, non-debatable um, issue, and you just do what you're supposed to do. And forget about all the prediction. The minute you're in a position, you should just forget about all the forecasts, everything you expected, and strictly focus on performance. Okay, because there is a theory which I uh, subscribe to, and that is of maximum pain. It seems the market maximum will hunt what? around. Maximum pain. All oh, right. The, the market will hunt around and just kill as many people as it can. Absolutely. Because, yeah. So to have a, a logical system, because it'll always go where you don't expect it to, won't it? So to have a logical yeah, system, yeah. you really need it. And this is the reason why you want to generally except very, very early on in a trend. If you're dealing with you know, monthly charts and you're getting in very early on a trend, 
generally you're going to want to always get in on pullbacks of the main trend um, and it's because you're getting on the pullbacks you're already dealing with a, an area where a lot of people are already experiencing some level of pain so hopefully when you get in that pain is not going to keep getting worse <laughs> <laughs> yes <well. laughs> so so what else is on your uh, question list so uh well that was that kind of answers my questions so uh you, you have an app for this don't you yeah i have a um it's been under development now for quite a few years stuff and my programmer has been working uh via trade station to create an automatic super objective money management uh, process which i can you see my screen right now i can yeah uh, let's see. Looks like okay, here it is. Okay, so this will be a picture of uh, this is a real account, and my position size is very small now because I I'm really worried about the stock market uh, based on wave theory, which is a predictive technology, um, is suggesting something really bad could happen, and I'm very worried about it. So I don't have I usually have like 30 positions or more. I have very, very few positions right now. Um, but you can see here the the uh, app actually takes all the information from TradeStation. It populates it inside of these columns and I have a lot of option positions. Uh, I think that's about all I have. Um, shows how many days till expiration, shows the size of the position, shows the symbol, describes what it is. Most of it's in the Russell 2000 on the short side indicates whether it's what's called a vertical spread or a naked long position. Uh, it'll also tell you if you're in a stock or a covered call by saying equity or covered. And it tells you how many positions are short. Um, the purple ones are the short ones, the white ones are the long ones. Then it goes through uh, you know, how much return on capital you're making, what's the percent profit per position, um, return on investment. And this is the real critical part. This is the part that relates to what I was saying earlier. This program will actually tell you when you should exit a position. If you're in options, let it expire, or when you should protect positions, like here's a position that's up 33%. And that's the point where if you're naked long an option, you can consider protecting it so that you can add to the profit and reduce your potential loss. Uh, so in this action section, if a position starts to lose, around 30% in an option, it'll tell me to fully exit. If it's a stock and it's around 15%, it'll tell me to fully exit. And on the other side, if it's an option and, and it's up 30%, uh, it'll tell me to protect it, which means to write calls against it. If it's up 60%, uh, it'll tell me to exit one third. If it's up 90%, it'll tell me to exit half. And it never tells me to get rid of the rest of it. That's gonna be based on following a monthly criteria of trend and what's uh, you know the kind of things that I look for to determine that the trend is coming to an end. And of course, an option has an expiration, so eventually you're forced out anyway. But I'll leave that one third just to keep going until something uh, important uh, changes in the environment on a monthly time frame. So this is a very unique program. I don't know of anything like it in TradeStation. I don't know of anything like it in the marketplace. Um, it's something I've been uh, working on with Stefan for many years. And finally, it's to a level where it's sophisticated, it's easy to use, it gives you a bottom line. It also tells you how many positions are making money or losing money, just you know whether they're above $1 or below negative $1. Um, so it lets you know just generally how things are going. Um, so it's very useful information. Okay, and does it, I know you talked about to get fully out, you want to see the market conditions change. Does yeah, that show right. up here? Or is that a sep that's a separate thing, is it? Um, well, that's what this row is right here. And I can't explain that. That's it has to do with people who take my class on River on either River Trading class. So it's sort of complicated to explain really quick. But this gives sure. me the yellow ones give me an idea of situations that aren't quite in sync with the monthly uh, river conditions. So these are all short positions that are based on wave theory. They're not in sync with my standard trend following approach. So there is some greater risk involved in these positions. So it's warning me that 
something's out of sync and so I better take a look at that and the only reason I'm keeping them is because wave theory is warning that something a big down move might happen so I'm ignoring these warnings for the at least for the next you know week or two and if it doesn't pan out then it may start getting out sure but the, I mean the market conditions are exceptional at the moment aren't they uh exceptional from what perspective history-wise so the evaluations are just outrageous oh, oh yeah it, it's it's very dangerous territory in fact I can bring up some charts I might have that let's see if I have that available um yeah this is a service that uh, shows the buffett indicator and talks about valuation it shows it's 209 percent overvalued right now it shows yeah. a chart of the average valuation line we're higher above it now than we've ever been in you know in 100 years or something maybe even more than that um there's quite a few things like that showing that there's excessive government uh, i mean excessive uh, public involvement in the markets uh, the only thing that keeps worrying me is that the put call ratio keeps getting quickly high on any declines and i don't know if that's the public or if it's professional i don't know what's going on with that but you know wave theory when you're at an extreme is generally the only thing that will tell you that you're at an extreme and everything else will disagree with it so i'm taking some chances here because wave structure appears super susceptible to a massive market meltdown so i'm very worried about it I think it's the highest level of margin debt ever. So. Oh wow! See, that's scary too. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, once it drops, you get the margin calls, and it will just feed on itself. Is, is that's my right. Extent. Yeah, yeah, I feel that for the first time in 40 years since I started the business, that we're back in the potential realm where we might get an 87 style kind of crash. I'm really worried about that. Okay. Uh, but that, well, thanks, Glenn. That sounds. Well, it sounds very helpful because I've always struggled with the stop loss and, and you know, because if you lose 50%, yeah. you need to earn double to get your money back, don't you? That's right. Uh, the big thing is you have to get out of the prediction business. Once you have the investment, forget about everything you believe, the reasons you got in, your targets, all that stuff should go out the window. And now it just becomes a matter of observing actual real world performance, not what you hope and believe and think, but just what is actually happening and take action based on what's actually happening, not what you hope to happen. Uh, yeah, I like it. It sounds well to relieve some of the pain, isn't it? When you go when it goes yep. against you. Okay, uh, well so, I think I think we've got pretty much everything. But how, sure, but how how do I how do I get the app? Do I need to do a class or something, or how do we do that? Um, well, that would be arranged um, through Stefan, our programmer. He's the one in charge of distributing the app. Until until we get it on the Trade Station App Store, it's currently not a publicly available. It's only privately available. So I would recommend that uh, someone write to Magellan. Uh, that's M A G E L A N, not two L's. It's M A G E L A N. Magellan at NeoWave.com, and ask him about uh, getting the app. You have to have Trade Station for it to work. Currently, we may eventually have other versions, but currently it needs to be in Trade Station. So if you have that application, that's great. If you don't, TradeStation has gotten very cheap. It costs as little as $50 a year for people outside of the United States and not a lot more if you're in the United States and not considered a professional like me. So uh, and TradeStation is by far the most sophisticated environment for programming, um, options analysis. It integrates everything, the brokerage, the trading, the programming. So it's a very nice uh, environment to do everything in and this just adds a huge amount of sophistication to the trading process.